Hi, I'm Dennis Kelderman, Cessna Structures Engineer here with Cessna Aircraft. Today we're going to look at how to make a stipple brush used for composites and then later in, in a second segment we'll be looking at how to use the stipple brush to saturate a composite ply. First of all, for definition, what is a stipple brush? It's interesting to note, in my years of experience, I thought that aviation was the only one that used that term, but it, on a Google search you'll find out there's actually several industries that use the term stipple brush. Uh, and it's so diverse uh, in nature. First of all, there's the com cosmetic industry. They use a stipple brush for uh, the application of, of cosmetics. Uh, and then we think in, in, in a really different environment, again, in the building industry, the, the drywall industry uses a very large stipple brush in order to make certain designs within a, a ceiling texture or in wall texture. The idea behind all these uh, different applications is that the, the brush is never pulled or pushed like a common brush, but instead the brush is used in every one of the applications with a, a tapping motion or driving the, the bristles of the brush directly into uh, the object for its uh, desired effect. So today what we're going to do is use a common everyday brush that is uh, what we would call a china brush or a natural brush and it has uh, hog hair bristles and the reason we're wanting to go with that type of a bristle is they'll, they'll not be affected by the, uh, uh, the ad adhesives and such used in the uh, aviation industry for composites. And the, the handle on this typical natural or china brush is wooden, so it's also not affected by uh, the environment that we're going to be placing it into. Otherwise, uh, it's very well possible that the, the handle would be part of your repair as it's going to melt. Um, the next step that we're going to uh, look at is, is cutting the bristles. They're too long uh, naturally, so we're going to need to cut them down to make them stiff. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is take some right off the shelf super glue and uh, adhere the bristles in the brush at the base. Uh, one thing you'll find a composite technician is he's always taking the brush with this type of a motion where he's trying to flick any loose hairs. The reason we're gluing them is for the same reason is because it's very uh, upsetting to the composite technician as, as he's uh, laying out a repair only to find bristles in his repair and that's something he doesn't want. So that's why we're going to glue them. Now I actually glued this one previous uh, to our filming today but basically what we do is we just take super glue and I'll just uh, simulate this. We go right around the base of the brush, applying a layer, a nice generous layer of super glue all the way around. And then we'll stand that in the corner and say in five minutes or so, we'll come back and uh, once it's good and dry, tack free, then we'll go ahead and, and cut the bristles, which we will do right now. We just take a scissors. The reason we take a scissors is because uh, I've tried this a number of ways, different types of shears. You can actually try it on a metal shear and you won't get very good results. So that's why we like the, the control that we have and uh, with the scissors. And what we're trying to do here is, is, is get about a half inch uh, length when we're done. So we'll go ahead and cut these bristles. Usually it takes a couple swipes to get everything nice and square. Okay, there you have it, your stipple brush. In our next video, we'll demonstrate how it's used by saturating a composite ply.